Thank you, Klaus. Good morning, everyone. Uh, over um, 18 years ago, I joined the Netherlands Red Cross as a, as a junior desk officer, and I was supporting a relief operation for Iraq uh, just after the first <coughs> Gulf War. It was um, an operation that consisted of distribution of, of food aid and, and uh, medical aid to children's hospitals. It was an operation that was funded by ECHO, and I must admit I didn't know what ECHO was at the time. It was a, still a very new donor, and I was very glad that there were some more experienced colleagues that could show me the ropes. There were certainly no e tolls in those days and no partners to help us. In the years that, uh, that followed, our Red Cross and Red Crescent societies, and, and many of them are here with us uh, today, and the Federation have been supported by ECHO in, uh, in hundreds of operations around the world. From the winter relief in Siberia to droughts in Africa, from the Balkans to Bam, from Jordan to Japan, from Mitch to the Maldives and Myanmar and Mali, from the Caucasus to Colombia and the Democratic Republic of Congo, from El Salvador to Sudan to Somalia to Syria and today, from Tanzania to Turkey, not forgetting Haiti, Pakistan, Libya and so many others. There are too many to mention. But the one I would like to highlight today is the support to our programs in North Korea. Over many years, ECHO supported the distribution of supplies to some 2,000 medical institutions around the country, reaching 8 million people, almost a, uh, a third of the entire population of North Korea. That scale is important in itself. We do not often reach such a high proportion of the population. But more importantly, ECHO was often our only main donor. Other donors were unable or unwilling to work in such a highly politicized context. It allowed us not only to provide humanitarian relief to people in need in a neutral and impartial way, but also to build the capacity of a local partner, the DPRK Red Cross Society, and to contribute to civil society building. Not an easy feat in that context. ECHO's contribution there in North Korea required political wisdom and courage, and it was only possible, in my view, because of its own adherence to strict humanitarian principles that are now enshrined in the humanitarian consensus. In an age where humanitarian boundaries are becoming increasingly blurred and the political pressures can be tremendous, this is something that we truly appreciate. For every major disaster that has become a household name, and we've seen some of the pictures uh, here today, there are of course even many more of a smaller scale. And we are very grateful that ECRO is now the second largest donor to our disaster relief emergency fund. Over the last four years alone, uh, its contributions have supported 96 small-scale operations, uh, bringing assistance to more than 10 million people. And in the coming months, we will work, we'll work closely with ECHO here in Europe to draw attention of citizens and decision makers to the many silent and forgotten disasters. Those that do not make the BBC headlines, but where the human suffering is certainly no less. ECHO's support has gone beyond disaster response. It also includes capacity building at community level, through the DPECO, for instance. Uh, and I've been able to see firsthand the difference this program is making in Central America and the Caribbean and Central Asia, where I was working. And as a result, those communities are now less at risk and better prepared to deal with any disaster, more resilient and better able to cope with crisis. Under the thematic program, and later the Enhanced Response Capacity Program, we've also seen support for capacity building of the ECHO partners themselves and for the entire sector. As an example, with ECHO support, we've been able to scale up our global logistics capacity and became recognized as a humanitarian logistics center, procurement center. And in 2006, we even managed to win a global supply chain award, competing against many very professional enterprises from the private sector. So we are confident that that high investment involved is also delivering a high return in terms of getting relief supplies to where they are needed more quickly, more effectively and at much lower cost. Similarly, ECHO has taken a strong lead in taking a pioneering donor role in promoting cash and voucher programming and was one of the first donors to adopt a specific policy in that regard. It has supported a number of agencies that use cash transfer programming to move from commodities-based assistance. And it also encouraged collaborative approaches and shared learning between the different partners. Last but not least, 
we have always very much appreciated the open and frank dialogue, both here in Brussels and on the ground, on the issues that matter most of us at all. The response, the humanitarian space, and the quality and effectiveness of our work. As we move into the next decade of our partnership, we will need to address many challenges together. The increased severity, the frequency and the complexity of disasters, the changing landscape and context, the emergence of new actors, and the growing challenges of coordination. The accountability, not only to those who support us, but especially to those we serve. And the global drive for standards and for certification. In the months to come, we will also be discussing many other issues closely related to ECHO's mandate and role. Civil protection mechanism, the EU aid core, and the important resilience agenda, to name but a few. So I would like to congratulate ECHO on its 20 years and to thank you on behalf of our members and most of all on behalf of those we've been able to serve with your support. Best wishes for the next 20 years and we look forward to accompanying you on your journey. We care together and we will continue to act together. Thank you. I'm going to hand now to Gerard who will speak on behalf of Johan Thank you.